Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. Discord server, media group, Facebook group, Twittering, Instagram, YouTube.com, backward slash Eric Tenkar. We do live streams, uh, Bad Mike from North Texas RPG and myself, every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you go to YouTube.com backward slash Eric Tenkar, E R I K T E N K A R. You can watch live and join in and uh, abuse us in the uh, in the chat. I, I don't know if we have a special guest for tomorrow. I know we have a bunch of guests, uh, I guess, in the bullpen, but I don't know who is scheduled for tomorrow or if anybody can make it tomorrow. It's, it's a rough one, right? The day before Thanksgiving. So, but we shall see. Now, reminder, uh, this episode of the Tavern Chat Podcast is brought to you by Frog God Games's Games's Games? Whatever. Orcus on 34th level, available exclusively on Indiegogo. Whether you play Swords and Wizardry, which obviously I do, and if you go to drive through, there is a huge sale. Uh, for Frog God Games on their PDFs, nearly every PDF for 5e, Pathfinder, and especially Swords and Wizardry, 70% off. There's some huge bargains. Uh, if you want to help the tavern, go to tankerstavern.com. Uh, for today, which is, what, Tuesday, November 24th, and uh, grab the link from there, but in any case, shop it. it, it, it you can have, if you have holes in your collection, and you might, because just like uh, Orcus on 34th level, this isn't a, a, a general sale item, right? In print, it's only available through the Indiegogo and generally at cons. So if you want to get it in print, you're going to have to go to the Indiegogo. But uh, a lot of these limited ones are available in PDF at 70% off at drive through RPG. That's just an aside. Um Orcus is waiting for your intrepid party of adventurers. Go to tenkars-tavern.com backward slash Orcus. That is tenkars-tavern.games backward slash Orcus and pick up your copy. Your party will curse you. Uh, but Orcus, you know, maybe call the stockings. Maybe not. But uh, hey, fun stuff. And I interviewed uh, John Hook. Uh, on Sunday, it was a good interview. It was just nice and relaxing. So now, what are we going to talk about today? Well, you know what? It's not something I actually th- have thought about, but somebody in one of my uh, Facebook groups question, made, a, made a comment, and it's a problem in Pathfinder, or it's a problem in 5e. Well, you know what? It, it's a problem. And I put, I'm going to put problem in parentheses in all editions of D and all of its derivatives. And what is that? Saving throws, spells. Here, here's a general thing. How I'm going to say just D and D in general works. Characters must just get hit dice, right? Every every level, every hit die, they get another die. Monsters are uh, what roll an average of uh, a d8, so it's a four point a- four point five average per hit die, right? I'm just gonna go straight. Um, unless you're playing like Twisted Wizard Light, in which case it's a d6 and three point five. But in any case, it doesn't really change the power curve all that much. Your AC, in theory, gets better as you get higher in level. Right, you gain equipment, better equipment, magic items, so that changes, and your chance to hit goes up as you go up a level. Generally speaking, your adversaries get better AC as you go up a level. But my experience with high level play was that the bonuses always exceeded the the harder AC. So, yes, higher level characters hit more often than lower char- lower characters did against their average adversary. All right? Now, spellcasters. Spellcasters don't have a two-hit roll, right? 
but they do have a save uh, for a lot of their spells. And that save does not change with the caster's level, right? And it changes with your target's level. So if you are, I don't know, 10th level spellcaster, uh, your adversaries of an equal level with you probably save about half the time, whereas when you were first level, if you cast a spell that needed a saving throw, which I don't know, I don't think it's supposed to be your life, but in any case, if you did, uh, what would happen? Well, they probably needed a 17 or an 18 to save. So, in effect, as you get higher as a spellcaster, some of your spells become less effective. And, and it's a weird dynamic, right? So let's take Fireball. Fireball in ad and I believe, maxed out at 10d6. You're like, all right, I'm throwing a 10d6 Fireball. But your opponents, your monsters, your creatures that you're fighting probably save about half the time, so they're only taking 5d6 damage. Whereas... When you were probably first casting this, they were maybe saving 30% of the time. So, yes, your potential goes up, but the average damage, maybe not so much. And what about uh, spells that are literally save or, right? Command, uh, suggestion, power word kill. Power word kill is a very powerful spell, but with the way saves work, how effective really is it at against creatures of the same level? Not, not very. Right. So now the question becomes: We all like to tinker, right? We all believe that we know better than the game designers. Well, what if saves became harder? All right. But that doesn't really help it as much, does it? Or they become harder as your PC levels. So maybe at fifth level, saves against your spells are at negative one. And then at tenth level, they're at negative two. And at fifteenth, they're at negative three. Uh, hypothetical. Not, these aren't play tested numbers. I'm throwing it out there. But what is good for the goose is good for the gander, right? It means that if there are spell-like abilities being used against your PCs, you would suffer a corresponding penalty. You're fighting a 10-hit die evil cleric. Let's go there, right? 10-hit die evil cleric. He casts hold person on one person. So that save is a negative four, but with this, it's a negative six. That's really damaging, right? Or he decides he's going to do it against, uh, what, three opponents? And they're all at negative two. He's probably got a good shot at getting at least one, maybe all three. It's the same reason why I don't like critical hit systems for D&D. &D. And I liked them when I was younger, don't get me wrong. And I played with them, even, as, even when I came back to gaming. But here's the problem with critical hit tables. Monsters are generally one and done. They're meant to be splashed through. They're, they're, when, you're, when your party is going through a dungeon, it's actually an, it's, it's, it's a game of attrition, right? You are swarming through the enemies, even supposedly equal to you, but they're always better because you're the play, player characters. So, yes, it's exciting to get that critical on the enemy. They're going to die anyway. But that critical on you, especially the ones that have a game effect beyond just damage, right? The damage is just going to, you know, you getting a critical on the enemy, that's just speeding up play, right? And then getting damage on you, yeah, it, it affects you faster. But once you start adding game effects, like, I don't know, arm injured, negative two attack. That means that nothing 
nothing for the creatures, nothing for the monsters you're fighting. Why? Because the adventure as written intends for them to die. That is how your players progress, right? Generally, average adventure. Okay? I'm not saying there aren't adventures that aren't more cerebral, but the average adventure, you're, you're plowing through these creatures or whatever. So yeah, negative. Ah, great. I hit him. Negative two. Like Rollmaster. Love love playing it. But I quickly learned as a GM that as much as the players love these critical systems, they're the ones getting fucked by it. Because the NPCs, the monsters, the creatures, they're all meant to die anyway. But the players are the ones who get the long-term repercussions. What do you mean I'm negative two until I, I heal up? You're negative two until you heal up. But I still got to go through the rest of this dungeon. I'm like, yeah, congratulations. The fucking walking wounded. So it's a similar problem if you start adding a, a penalty to saves or try to make it a high level casters. Uh, spells are harder to save against because that lands in the player's laps too doesn't only just go one way. It has to go both ways. That's the whole thing about game balance. So I don't know if there's a very gameable solution to that. I'd love to hear your ideas on it. I really would. And as I'm doing this, as I'm, I'm yabbering along, I'm realizing that uh, I've got voicemails from Joe the Lawyer that I've yet to get to. Joe, I have not forgotten you at all. It's just that I misplaced you. So uh, I think I think we'll be listening to the Joe uh, voicemails on Thanksgiving. That might be a good day. Like I said, tomorrow, God willing, myself, Bad Mike, will be talking crit. So, folks, uh, it is Tuesday before Thanksgiving. My my niece Shannon, nine years old, is over. She came over directly from her COVID test, which she, I guess you could say she passed because she failed. I mean, she was negative, right? So I guess that... Negative is positive. Negative is positive in, in, in Just COVID. Just like in toxicology. All right, there you go. <laughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to pop on the urine test. And I popped. Okay, you're positive, which means you failed. No, she was negative, which means she passed. Well, she'll be spending a couple of days with uh, uncle and auntie and grandparents downstairs. And uh, my sister and my brother-in-law are going to get tested uh, right before heading out here on, uh, I guess, uh, well, well, tomorrow, right before uh, locking themselves in the house until coming out on Thanksgiving. So I'm not a doctor, folks. I'm not a medical, medical professional. I make no illusions, no attempts at being such. It's a tough time. COVID's a tough time, especially around the holidays. You have to take actions that protect you, your loved ones, your family, your friends, your community. If you need further advice other than using common sense, and believe it or not, common sense is a very strong uh, ability that the vast majority of us have. We just don't use it enough. Use your common sense. If you need further medical advice, seek the advice of a medical professional that you trust. Ignore the talking heads on fucking TV. I'm sorry, but they're just there for ratings. Be safe. Be well. As always, God bless. Roll those dice. And manana, Bad Mike and I, 8 p.m. Eastern, TankCarsTavern.com backwards slash Eric Tankar. We'll see you then.